Lady the Novel Stitcher. It is Saturday, April 13th, and this is Floss Tube 33. If you're new here, thanks so much for checking out my channel. I hope you like what you see, that you'll stick around and consider subscribing. And please pop into the comments and let me know where you're watching from, what you're stitching on, and a little bit about yourself so I can start to get to know you better. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here with me again. It's been a few weeks since my last video, so I'm excited to be filming and to catch up with you all, see how you are all doing, and talk stitching with you. And I do have one small announcement before we dive in, and that's that I created a Buy Me A Coffee. I've been thinking about this for a while and going back and forth on it. Um, I didn't want to turn anyone off, but some other floss tubers do this. Buy Me A Coffee is kind of like a Venmo account where you can do a small donation uh, to support a creator, uh, kind of like a tip. I see it as like tipping for entertainment, um, completely optional. But I do put a lot of time and effort and thought into these videos to write all my notes, to set everything up, take everything down, to film and edit. I pay for the editing software that I use to edit these. And also with the Stitches and Pages book club, I'm putting a quite a lot of thought and effort into that as well as uh, paying for a Zoom subscription every month, just me having to pay for that um, to make sure you get the, the best experience you can. Um, the free version of Zoom only allows meetings to last 40 minutes and has some other limited functionality. So I thought a subscription would really make that uh, the best it could be for everyone. Uh, but the Buy Me A Coffee is completely optional. You do not have to do it if it is not your thing. So just wanted to throw that out there. The link is in my description and this is like the only time I'll talk about it. So let's just move straight into the stitching because I have a pretty good amount to share with you. Um, it's been three weeks since my last video because last week, um, the week before last week, I was traveling for work. I went to San Diego for a conference and was gone the latter half of the week and most of the weekend. So I did not do much stitching. I did bring something to stitch on the plane Plain stitching is probably not for me. I didn't bring a light or anything, um, so I didn't get a ton of stitching done while I was gone, but have done a good bit uh, regardless of that trip. And so we're gonna talk about my finishes. I have some starts and I have some whips, or one whip this time. I have a little bit of haul. I have some plans and then we will get into the bush bookish talk and we will talk about the Stitches and Pages book club toward the end of the video. I'll also put a timestamp in the description in case you don't have time to watch the full video and want to go straight to the book portion because we will be talking about those Zoom meetings that we will be having next month. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. And if you're just here for straight stitching, we're going to get started on that. And we're going to start, I have two finishes, which is pretty great. Um, I've been really focusing on finishing this year, at least some of the smaller things I have. Not necessarily reducing my whip count because I'm still doing some new starts, but keeping things pretty even, pretty steady, not adding to my whip count too much. So the first thing I finished is Lucky, and this is by Chris, the camping stitcher. She's on floss tube as well. Her floss tube is great. She stitches some beautiful things and she has an Etsy shop. I will link her shop below and I will also link her floss tube below. And that is Lucky. And so this was my first foray into 46 count. So this is a 46 count white Bergen. And I'm having a lot of, had a lot of fun stitching on this. Uh, the 46 count was a little bit tough at times. I think I had a few issues where I miscounted. One, where the L is and that beautiful motif underneath it. It's a little bit too close. It should be a couple stitches further away from that L, but I didn't want to frog it, um, so I just left it and it's fine. It just touches up a little close to that, but I don't think it really looks bad or anything like that. And let me see if I wrote down the colors last week. I meant to write them down. Maybe I can remember. I did my own conversion of classic Colorworks colors for this one. I probably didn't write it down, did I? I'm gonna try to remember. I feel like I can remember. This always happens. I say I take good notes <laughs> and I don't. Um, it's definitely, it's all classic Colorworks. The dark green is definitely mistletoe. The medium green is definitely desert mesquite. And then the lighter one, I don't remember. So if you really wanna know, just put a comment in. Um, 
but you could really use any greens with this one. Uh, I know that Chris probably has DMC options. I don't know if it's charted fully in DMC or if she used her own fancy floss as well, but there's definitely DMC listed on the chart. It's a PDF, um, but you could use any greens that you want um, and it would look beautiful. So I think this is really cute. It's pretty small. I have tiny hands, so came out pretty small on that 46 count. I don't know if I would stitch all the time on 46 count or stitch anything really big on 46 count, but it was fun and it's really cute and the stitches are just so tiny and delicate. And I do have the other half of this linen um, if I wanna stitch something else small. And then um, I think for finishing, I'm gonna try doing a flat fold for this one. So if anyone has recommendations for a really good flat fold tutorial, um, I know a lot of floss tubers have one or there are a lot of them out there. I haven't looked into which one might be the best to watch, but I think this is cute and would make a really fun flat fold with some pretty green fabric and some ribbon. So that is the plan for that. So that will be, that's my first foray into 46 count. And then I'll also have it be my first foray into a flat fold. So we'll see how that goes. And hopefully I can get to finishing that in the next few weeks, even though I probably wouldn't display it until next March for St. Patty's Day. Uh, still fun to have it and get it finished. I also need to make sure as I'm trying to finish a lot of things this year, I don't let things just sit without fully finishing them. Um, Cause I probably can see myself having a huge pile of finishes, but not fully finished by the end of the year. And that defeats the purpose of finishing things to me, for me, if I don't fully finish them. Um, everyone's different. Some people like just stitching and it doesn't matter if they fully finish it and that's totally fine. But right now, two years into my stitching journey, I wanna get some stuff that I can display. So this is my second finish. This is Sunflower Sampler by uh, Country Cottage Needleworks. And I did this on a 32 count Vintage Blue Whisper. Is that correct? Yes, Vintage Blue Whisper Bergen Linen, um, which is really pretty. Kind of looks like cloudy, summery sky, which is perfect for a pattern with sunflowers. Um, so that's my finish of that one. Uh, 32 count, two over two. Obviously, I did one over two on the 46 count, um, but this is two over two on the 32 count. And I use the called for, which is some DMC and weak Style works. And so that's really cute. I'll give you a close up. I like it on this fabric. And I'll have to see how I want to finish this one. Um, maybe just find like a little board at Michael's or something and just kind of do a more unique finish. Maybe I can find something like a sunflower theme board. I think Alex and I have some errands to run tomorrow and we'll be near a Michaels, so we might pop in and maybe there'll be like some sort of sunflower board or theme thing that I could finish this on. Sunflowers are my favorite flowers. So this is so cute and it's gonna be fun to put out uh, for the summer. And I did do the A, B, C, D while I was in San Diego on the plane and like for a minute in the hotel, but that was all I did. <laughs> so traveling, stitching, maybe not uh, super my thing, So, but that's okay. Yeah, I brought a couple projects with me and I was like, eh, maybe not. Also, when you're at a conference, it's just long days, it's busy. Um, I didn't really see too much of the city, unfortunately, but that kind of... That's what happens if you're traveling for work and you're in a conference in the hotel all day. So we went out for dinner a couple nights. So we got to see a couple of the neighborhoods and really beautiful city. We didn't get the best weather. It was really warm the day we came in. And then uh, we flew in on Wednesday. We we're there most of the day Wednesday, which it was really nice, mid seventies and sunny. And then Thursday, it was a little chilly and the clouds started moving in and actually rained a little bit on Friday. And then I left early in the morning Saturday and spent the entire day traveling pretty much because uh, of the time difference. So, but that's okay. It was still a cool experience. I've never gotten to travel for work before. So I appreciated the opportunity and my company allowing me to do that. So those are all my finishes. And so now I have two new starts. And what I'm doing this year is every quarter I get a free new start. I think that's something that like 
Megan the Seattle Stitcher and Bridge in the Museum Stitcher are doing. They're also trying to lessen their starts a little bit where they can. And so I'm doing that one new start every quarter of the year, which will be four. And then as I finish things, every two things I finish, I can do a new start. And so I just finished, oops, dropped the cap on the floor. I just finished those two, so that allows a new start. Also, I hope you can't hear the wind. It's like super, super windy here today and yesterday. Pennsylvania has been like so windy this year. I don't understand why. And it would be, it's a little cloudy, but it would be like really warm and nice out if it weren't like crazy winds. So, but anyway, my first new start is related to the Stitches and Pages book club. And that is One Stitch at a Time by La Di Da. And this was a market release that I didn't see a lot of people showing on their channels or talking about. And I was just looking for a pattern to go with the book that we're reading for Stitches and Pages. If anyone hasn't heard and is interested, we're reading a single thread. But again, we'll talk about that later. But I was looking for a pattern that would go with the book. And I just saw this on 123 Stitch and I thought it was so cute. Just such pretty kind of spring summery colors for this time of year. And then the quote says, beautiful things come together one stitch at a time, which is a perfect stitchy quote. The one thing I'm gonna change, I'm an editor for a living. Uh, it's what I do. Started in newspapers, now I work for a company and I edit marketing materials. This has an ellipsis and then a capital one. And you don't really need the ellipses. Like beautiful things come together, one stitch at a time. It's not, to me, this is like a, a sentence. Beautiful things come together one stitch at a time. So I'm going to take out the ellipses and I'm going to lowercase the one because for me, that is what will make me happiest. Not everyone has to do that. I don't judge anyone else's grammar in your comments or in your emails or anything like that. But as a professional editor, I need to do what works for me and isn't gonna drive me crazy. So that's the only change. Um, besides for using my own choice of fabric. So I am doing this on a 36 count Legacy by Picture This Plus, which is a beautiful fabric. I'm really happy with this choice. I think it's pretty similar to the called for. I don't know if I need the board, so we're gonna try it without it. And that is my progress so far. It's gonna be so pretty. I really love this one. Like I'm enjoying this one so much that I might, we'll see, I might uh, end up accidentally focusing on this a lot more than some of my other stitching. I don't know, it's just beautiful. And so it's one over two on that 36 count. And then the called for are all Weeks Dye Works. And it's just a really lovely palette of colors that are gonna look so beautiful um, on this fabric. And I did have like a little bit of an issue with this because it doesn't mirror, like this part is different than this part. And this is this whole little motif here. So I think I thought it was the same thing and it's not. So I messed up a little bit here. I had to frog it actually two times, which was giving me a little bit of frustration, but I powered through so that I wouldn't be angry um, with this project. And I think this is gonna be one of my favorites. This is just so pretty. And it would really look beautiful on any kind of brown or beigey fabric. I know a lot of people are stitching this with me for stitches and pages. If you're on the fence about this pattern in general or you hadn't seen it, I so highly recommend this one. I do think the S kind of looks kind of funny, but that's correct. Um, I was like stitching it and I was like, this is like Katie on a Monday morning before her coffee. She's just kind of sideways. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's really pretty. I love that house. And so I've got to decide what I want to do. Um, I basically started moving down on this flower here. Oh, nope, this one, sorry. So I think I'll probably move down from here and stitch this and then maybe get to the house after that. I'll just go where the stitching takes me, but this one's so pretty, I love it. So those are, no, that's just one new start. And then I have another new start. Um, it's also another market one. There was just a lot of good things that were shared at market this year. And so this one, 
I kind of started it and then I didn't like it and so I restarted it. So there's not like a ton of progress on this one, but it is a start. So this is You Got This by The Artsy Housewife. I love this with this little owl. I've been looking for a while for a pattern to stitch to frame and stick up in my cubicle at work. And I thought this, when I saw this come out for market, I was like, that's it, that's perfect. Like the owl, he's funny. I love a coffee mug. I'm always drinking coffee at work. You got this is the perfect message for when it's a rough work day and you're just not feeling it. And I can just look at this owl and be like, I got this, it's fine. Um, and I just think it's so cute. So I like this one. It's only 91 by 89. So it's a really doable piece and she has a full DMC conversion. Um, otherwise it's stitched in classic color works, gentle arts and weeks, but I am using mostly DMC except for the mug itself. And so I started this one on a 28 count picture this plus, bleh, picture this plus earthen, which is for me, I think everybody has different dye lots of that one. Mine is kind of like a more pinky, almost maroony kind of one with different modeling. Um, and I thought that would be fun for this pattern. And then I started stitching it and I was just like not feeling it. I was like, I don't think the pink is the way to go. I thought I would do kind of like a different kind of background, but the colors were kind of clashing to me. I had only done, I'm not sure on which side over here no well, I don't know I had only done these and then like some of into this flower and I was just like you know I gotta be really aware of not liking something and not sticking with it and being okay with pivoting um because nine times out of ten for me if I don't like something within the first handful of stitches I'm probably never gonna like it like it's not just gonna like work out for me or come together for me personally and so I was like, okay, we can't spend too much time on this because I'm just going to be frustrated that I wasted time stitching on a fabric that wasn't working um, for this pattern. And the fabric's lovely. It just wasn't working for me. So I switched to, and I realized going through all my fabrics because I'm trying to do a lot from stash and be more mindful of the money I'm spending on cross stitch that I have a lot of dark beigey and brown colored fabrics which I did not think would work for this because of how brown the owl is. I didn't want to overdo the brown. And I was like, I am not allowed to buy any fabrics that are darker beigey or middling brown anymore. I have to be more adventurous or go lighter or something. But anyway, I chose a 28 count whisper and I'm very happy with this, even though I have very little stitching. Uh, so this is 28 count whisper Lugana. I think it's just a Zweigart. I also have grays and I'll even show one in um, like 36 count and 40 count, but I, this one's so small that the 40 count would have been four and a half inches by about four and a half inches and doing it on the 28, it's about six and a half. And I wanted it to be a little bit bigger for sitting on my desk at work. So I think this is going to be perfect. So it's two over two. And then the only other thing I changed is the called for for the mug is Blue Moon by Classic Color Works. And I just thought it was a little more gray tone, gray purple toned, like a gray purpley blue. And I just wanted something a little bit more bright and peppy. So I went with Cool Azul instead, which is almost the same color as this Nerd Hoop. And so I think that that's just more me, uh, a little bit more brighter. And I think it's gonna look really pretty against the green and then will look really pretty against the owl when he gets stitched up. Uh, so that is what I did there. And I didn't cut this down. So this is like a big piece of fabric, but I just used needle minders to kind of hold it back. So yeah, I think that's gonna look really pretty. So. That's just consider if you're stitching on something and you're not enjoying it, whether it's really worth it to push through or whether you should really think about just um, pivoting and trying something different, but this is cute. So I'm excited to work on that one more and that's gonna stitch up pretty quickly and I will make sure to frame that in like a nice little brown frame maybe to match the owl and get that up in my cubicle. Some of my coworkers know that I cross stitch, like my immediate coworkers, no one knows about floss tube. 
I don't know, I don't tend to tell people in real life who aren't cross-stitchers, besides like family and really close friends, because people might think it's a little weird. I mean, it is a little, we all do it. You all are in this community with me, sitting here watching with me. So you're my people, so you get it. But like non, non floss tube cross stitch or non cross stitch people probably don't get it. Even non cross stitch people don't quite get like the, the cross stitching part. Probably depends who you talk to. Like when I first told my parents, they were like, okay, that's nice. You're 33 and that's what, okay. <laughs> I like to be crafty. It doesn't matter what age you are. I think sometimes people see it as a older, more traditional hobby, I suppose. But obviously we all know that anyone at any age can enjoy cross-stitching and there is something for every kind of style of person, regardless of what your aesthetic is when it comes to cross-stitch. But yeah, I don't tell, tell a lot of coworkers about it, but now they might ask once I finish that. And so the last thing I have is a whip. So I didn't only have one whip, but I did have, you know, two finishes and two new starts. So that was what I spent most of my time on. But I did get a little more progress into Teresa Kogut's hometown, Sal. This is part of her Patreon. Um, Patreon is like a platform that you can become a member of different people, like a patron of different people's um, Patreons. Uh, you do a little monthly, you pay a monthly subscription and you get different kinds of freebies, I would say, of all of the designers. Teresa Kogut, that I, I've tried a few Patreons and hers is the best, bar none. If you like her stuff and you're willing to, her Patreon is fantastic. You get lots of free patterns. You get this free mystery sal every year. This one's a two-year mystery sal, but regardless, it's still, well, it's not free because you're paying a subscription, but you know what I mean. You get a, a sal every year, um, beautiful patterns. She did a live earlier this week where she just chatted about market and stitching and everything like that. And that was, it's probably now available to everyone, but it was at first, it, it I mean, everyone can rewatch it, but the live was exclusive to Patreon members. She does coloring book pages, which I haven't printed out and done yet, but I kind of, I kind of want to do that at some point because that's fun. So anyway, if you like Teresa Kogut, I would highly consider um, supporting her through her Patreon. It supports her as an artist and you get some really fun little perks of doing that. So anyway, this is her hometown sal. It is a two-year sal exclusively through her Patreon. The pattern will be released um, once the sal is over, but it's going to be a couple years. I'm stitching this on a 40 count platinum, one over two, and I'm using Teresa's called 4DMC. While I was talking, instead of showing this, I should have shown the pattern. So let me show that again. So you can see there's only some of it released. She does a new release every 15, every month on the 15th. So we'll get a new portion on Monday. And she did it over two years to make the sections really doable. Otherwise they'd be pretty big and they, it is some heavy stitching with all of these different buildings. And obviously it's gonna be a hometown. So just all the buildings you would find in your average small town. So it's fun. It's not, it's not like the most intricate, creative, silly or exciting pattern to stitch, but it's just like calming nice easy it's fun to see these buildings come together it's a lot of fun to see what portion she's going to release each month and what new buildings we're going to get um and it's just really cute and i think it just looks really delicate on this 40 count it's going to be a very big long pattern so 40 count for me was the way to go and i'm enjoying it i think yeah call 4 dmc i think i said um, so in this building, this I think was like Willow Antiques. I do have to fill this in. I'm going to wait and do the back stitching at the end and see what I want to like, see what buildings end up being incorporated. I'll probably like hate having to do all the back stitching at the end. But my reason for that is to see if I want to change up the names of some of the buildings and, and shops and things to match things near me. Um, so if I can fit it or figure out, I'd have to like sketch it out myself, but with backstitch that probably wouldn't be too hard, but there's a beautiful willow tree that I pass when driving near where I live and it's on a farm. And so forget the name of the farm right now, but I might put like, if it fits the name of the farm in here, cause there's a big barn and then there's the willow tree kind of off 
to the side on the road. And so I might do some things in this pattern to reflect where I live. The barn is not this color, but that's okay. Um, I might even change some of the colors of the buildings to match, but I'm not sure I'll need to do that because I think she'll have chosen colors that really complement each other well. And so I would be a little bit um, not wanting to change up the colors too much and then making doing something weird that wouldn't work with the rest of the pattern as it's released. So that is Teresa Kogut's hometown cell. So I need to get moving on this one. I don't necessarily feel like I need to catch up. It's the fourth month. There's been four parts. This is most of part one and like a teeny bit of part two. Um, so I'm already like two and a half parts behind, but that's, that's fine with a two year sal. I'll, um, I have plenty of time to play a little catch up and I don't feel the need to be exactly on track with the new releases. Um, I just don't want to get to the end of year two and have like 50% of the pattern not done. Cause then I probably won't finish it or it'll take me forever because it is big. So I gotta at least keep up to an extent. Um, so I don't fall too far behind and then have a gigantic, um, unfinished pattern. So that is all of my actual stitching, but I do have some haul and some plans. I'm going to share some of Teresa Kogut's Patreon patterns, but I was silly and did not write them down. So I'm just kind of going to explain what they look like without saying the name, but the name will be on the image that I'm going to show because they're all PDFs. If you're part of her Patreon, you get all PDFs, but I just want to show how good it is because I know a lot of you do like Teresa Kogut and if she's not your style, that's totally fine, but I wanted to just show a couple of the things. So. One of the ones she released last month is like one of my favorites and I really want to start it, but I'm trying to be good about not starting things or not starting big things. And so it's this one, it has an Anne of Green Gables quote, which I'm going to slightly forget. So I'm not going to mess it up and say it, but I just thought this pattern was so pretty. I love that border. There's the cat who I might do a slightly darker gray to look a little bit more like my scout. There's a stack of books and a quill and the pretty Anne of Green Gables quote and the little birds. And I just thought this one was just so me. It's so very me. So I will be stitching this at some point this year. I was debating between stitching this and you got this by the artsy housewife and I actually don't even have a fabric that I really love um, for this pattern, this Teresa Kogut pattern. So that's part of the reason I haven't started it yet too. So I have to find a good fabric for that. Something light and springy and buttery. So there's that one. And then also I think last month she did this one. It's spring with a pretty house and some robins. And I just thought that one was super sweet too, super cute. And then this month, so those were from March. And then in April, she, and usually all of the patterns are kind of themed the same. They all kind of connect in some way. So these ones she did in shades of like blues and beiges. And so she did this one with um, faith, hope, love, and peace maybe, or something. Again, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm gonna show it right here and it's four blocks. I can like kind of remember what it looked like. Um, but I just liked the color she chose and I thought that was really pretty and you could just stitch like one of the little blocks or some of the little detailing inside them. So that's like a really adaptable pattern. So I thought that was really pretty. And then she also released this Faith one. This I definitely want to stitch. It's actually a little similar to the Summer House Stitch Works one that came out at market, but I'm assuming Teresa probably thought of this idea a while ago. And so that's okay that they're a little similar, but I wanted to maybe stitch the Summer House Stitch Works one. And I think I'll just stitch this one from Teresa and maybe do more of an ombre of dark to light blue for me instead of, I think there's like a beige-ish color in that one. So that's just some of what she releases as part of her Patreon. Different tiers, different price points, get you different amount of patterns. So think about checking it out. If you're a Teresa Kogut fan, well worth it. And I will be stitching most of, if not all of the patterns I just showed at some point. 
And then my other little bit of haul, only because I had like a slightly little bit left on a gift card and I was in a spendy mood. So luckily I had the gift card. Um, so I got a couple things from Hollis Hands Creates. So I got this Plum Street sampler that I had never seen before. It's from 2013 and it's called A Red Cottage. And I want to stitch some smaller things by Plum Street and some of those other designers who can do a lot of really big patterns, but then also have a good amount of smalls. And I just thought that was really cute. I love the little house and then the big house. And those flowers are just funky. I like the colors. This would be a fun summer stitch. So I got that one. And then it might actually even work on this fabric if I wanted to do it on a gray, though that might work for all of the many beige and browns I have. I also got prehistoric. I had seen a couple other floss tubers with this and thought it was really pretty. For me, it's just very much gray, which I, with a, like a light blue tint, I thought there would be more modeling. Um, I thought, I think others, their uh, dye lot is a little bit different, but it's still pretty. And like, you can't go wrong with a nice, gray. It looks that's pretty true to color. So it is really pretty. Really nice. Um, soft. And I like fox and rabbit. So yeah, not a ton of modeling or really anything super unique about it. But sometimes you just need a good color or good fabric that would most patterns would work on this 36 count. And I feel like there's very few patterns that wouldn't work on just a very simple lovely gray. So there's that. And so we'll get into plans and then we'll move into books. So for plans, I have another new start that will probably happen possibly before my next video. And this is all, I'm also calling this a freebie new start since I haven't like finished two things to start yet another thing, but this is not for me. It is, a I'm gonna stitch this for a friend and so I'm going to allow myself this extra new start because I have to get it done by October. And so this is going to be for Stacy, who is my best friend from college. Here's a picture of us at my wedding. Maybe just an excuse for me to show off a wedding photo again, but I looked really pretty. So I got married in December if you're new here, so it's still fairly fresh. Um, but Stacy was my maid of honor and she is getting married herself in October to a wonderful guy that I am very excited for her to settle, to marry. Um, it's gonna be really wonderful. The one thing about Stacy and I, we met at Penn State, so you can see my Nittany, ooh, like this, Nittany Lion. Um, and we both were journalism majors and worked for our college newspaper together. But other than our love of writing, editing, newspapers, and books, Stacy and I are opposites in almost every way. Um, and I think that's what makes our friendship work sometimes. Um, she is the most outgoing person you'll ever meet. She always is doing something. She loves people. She loves being out and about. She's very creative. She kind of is very much a free spirit and goes where the wind takes her. She's very adventurous. Um, she's always taking chances and doing things I wouldn't do. Uh, so there's, there's the part where she gets me out of my comfort zone or doing something different, um, more than I otherwise would sometimes. And then I'm the one who kind of tells her, uh, maybe slow down, maybe, you know, stay in some nights, uh, maybe, you know, kind of be the voice of reason sometimes when she wants to do so many things, she doesn't have time for them all. And I help her figure things out. So that's me and Stacy. So in addition to that, our weddings are going to be almost polar opposites. Mine was very traditional. Stacy's is, they're getting married in a church and then they're doing the reception in a fire hall. And it is going to be 1950s vintage Halloween themed. So mine was like winter themed. Um, so it's going to be fun and I'm so excited because it's very Stacy and very much her fiance to do something weird and funky and fun for their wedding and to really like lean in really far into a theme. Um, so 1950s Halloween and I am a bridesmaid. Um, so it's, it's gonna be an interesting time, but I'm excited. So anyway, I wanna stitch her and her fiance something. And so I'm gonna do Reaping Love by Silver Creek Samplers because um, most of the wedding samplers are like hearts and roses and pinks and reds and happy and love and they're having a 1950s vintage Halloween wedding. So I wanted to stitch something that would work for them 
to commemorate their wedding. I think this one is funny. I think they'll love it. There's a place for their initials. I can put the wedding date down below. I think I saw Frizzy Lizzy Stitches uh, do this one way, way back. Check out her channel if you haven't watched her. She's so fun to watch and has a lot of great stitching, but she stitched this one. And so it's been on the back of my mind, like remembering that this pattern was out there. And the minute I was like, oh yeah, like the wedding's coming, I've got to find my dress and things are happening as far as helping with wedding planning and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I need to stitch some something. And I think this will be the perfect option. So I need to order that and figure out a fabric. Um, but I will be getting that and stitching it for her. And I got to start it soon because I'm not the fastest stitcher and I have a lot of other stuff I want to work on but this one has to be done for the wedding in October. So that is a big plan, but it'll be fun to stitch. It's not, it's not that huge of a pattern, um, but it, it'll still probably take me a good bit of time to do that one. And then other plans are just to continue on hometown, get done with part one. Um, All Things Spring is a pattern in just cross stitch um, that I've shown a couple times. I don't have it in front of me, but it's small and it's just a little springy pattern. And I wanna finish that one this month if I can. So that's on the list. And then Oh Joyous Day, which you've seen a lot, which is one of my favorite stitches that I have. Really wanna make progress on that and finish it by June. So I wanna do the middle row of that. I'm almost done with the house in the middle and then next to the house is like a basket or a urn of flowers. So get through that and then the bottom um, next month into June and hopefully finish that one in June and get it framed and have my big first finished framed sampler to hang on the wall of our house. And so that is it for the actual stitching, I think. I don't think I left anything out. Um, so if you're just here for the stitching, I will let you go, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you're stitching on. Are you doing any fun sales? Do you have any like summer stitching plans upcoming? Um, and just pop in and say hi and let me know how you're doing. And then if you're here for the bookish content, including stitches and pages, let's dive into that. So first I'll just talk about the book. We all know what the book is. Who has started it? If you haven't, don't worry. There's plenty of time. We're not meeting until mid to late May, so you have time. It's pretty short. It's not a super long book. Um, I also want to thank one of my viewers, and I didn't ask her if I could say her name, but she sent me a lovely little card and a little bookmark, like a little magnetic bookmark that she also uses to kind of put on her key snap or her um hoop to hold her fabric back and it has like a k on it so thank you so much that's so lovely it's so kind when people do that like you never expect that kind of thing but it just makes my day um anyway so a single thread is the book uh how are we liking it no spoilers because some people haven't started and everybody reads at a different pace but i am about a hundred oh that's a good part to be at i'm a hundred pages in I'm loving it. It's really good so far. I like the characters. Obviously the setting, it's set in England, is fun. And we're just kind of starting to get to know everyone and get to know this different cast of characters and the main character. So I'm loving it. And it's fun to read about stitching. I haven't read any books that include like stitching language and not a spoiler, but there's like um, parts where they talk about having to rip the stitches out because they made a mistake or they're not lying straight. And that's like, it's just funny to read that kind of thing. And you're like, yep, I know what, I know what that's like. And like, it's talking about the, she's learning the different stitches and the cross stitch and um, eyelet and all of that. And so it's really fun to read something um, about our hobby, but also that has just a really lovely story to tell so far. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm excited to see where the book goes. So put in the comments how you're liking it. Um, just be careful of any spoilers. You know, a lot of people getting it from the library, haven't had a chance to read it, and um, we want to make sure people enjoy the book and don't, don't have anything spoiled for them, but I can just say that I'm really enjoying it, and it seems like quite a few of you are as well, so that excites me that so far it seems like the book we chose is a winner, and it'll lead to a lot of lovely and fun discussions about um, during our Zoom calls. So let's talk 
a little about the Zoom calls. So what I'm gonna do, my ask of you, if you're joining in on the Zoom call, in the description box, I'm gonna have a link to a Google form. And that Google form is gonna have a list of dates and times you can pick from for the Zoom. I think it only lets you pick one. I only want you to pick the time that is best for you, the one time that is best for you. So the first three times I think are weekday evenings, and then the second three times are weekend afternoons. So look carefully at what the dates are. They're all in May. I think it's like three, like a Thursday and two Wednesdays or two Thursdays or something like that at eight o'clock Eastern time and then two Saturdays and maybe a Sunday around two or three Eastern time. So hopefully those times work for people who can do it in the evening on a weekday after work because they're busy on the weekend or work for people who weekends are just easier for your schedule or when you eat dinner or what you do. And then the times should, at least on the weekends, work for anyone who's on the West Coast or um, is uh, international, um, probably easier for you unless you, you know, it would probably be like five o'clock on the West Coast for the eight o'clock um, one during the week, which might work for some people depending what time you get off work. So hopefully those times work for all of you. Obviously what was most important is that they work for me because uh, I have to do the Zoom and host the Zoom. And so that a little bit is, of it is predicated on me um, and my work schedule and my schedule with Alex and things that we have going on. Um, so there are six times to choose from. So hopefully I'm going to probably do just two Zooms, one of the weeknights and then one of the weekends. And so I will say that there is a chance that the time that is most voted on for the weeknights and the weekend is the one we will pick. So I'll pick one weeknight, one weekend, whichever one the most people say they can do. Um, it might not end up working for you and I don't have a workaround for that, right? We're all busy. There's gonna be a night that some people are not going to be able to make or a weekend or some people aren't gonna be able to make either. And there's not really much of a solution for that unless I decide to host a third one. And even then there's a chance people might be like on vacation that entire period, it's right before Memorial Day. Um, so just wanna be upfront and transparent that I'm going to do my best and that's why we're voting on the times and that's why it's important you click on that link and input the, di the time you choose or the time that's best for you so I can find the time that works for most everyone, but there are some people who are just probably not going to be able to attend. And I do apologize for that, but there's not much we can do about that. And if you know you really are super disappointed, we will find a way to connect. You can email me, you can you know, chat me, you can do like a little Instagram live or something. We can, we can figure it out. Um, but I just kind of want to be upfront with people joining these book clubs that I only have so much time and energy um so we will make this work the best we can but i'm excited and the zooms are going to be a lot of fun um i've never hosted a zoom and been the host so i'm going to do my best um to make them to pick a time that works for everyone we're going to do the zoom subscription so that we have more than 40 minutes because i don't think that's going to be enough time um it can definitely be one of those kind of things where i'm going to say I'll probably cap it off at two hours. So if we don't have enough for two hours and we end sooner, that's fine. Um, but with the ones that start on the weeknights at eight o'clock, I gotta go to bed by 10. I know I'm only 36, but 10 o'clock is Katie's bedtime. I, I can't stay up really late. I'm not a night owl. I'm not a morning person either. I'm like middle of the day, I'm good. Otherwise, forget about it. Um, but so we'll probably cap it at about two hours unless we're having a super blast. Um, I don't know if I leave the Zoom meeting, if it would end for everyone. I'm assuming it probably would, but I will hang on, try to hang on for at least two hours. We might not want to stay on that long. People might hop off after an hour or so, but you never know how the conversation's going to go. So we'll probably do around that and um, we'll try to be as inclusive as possible. So there is live captioning that you can turn on in, in um, Zoom calls. Um, there's a chat box for anyone who doesn't feel comfortable speaking out loud or being on camera and wants to just put their thoughts in the chat box. 
and I'll be reading some of those off. I know we have at least one um, attendee who is deaf, so I want to be as inclusive as possible with the live captioning and reading any comments that they or any others have out loud um, so that everyone can enjoy the conversation. And I think, is that everything? I'm gonna check my notes. Yes, so those are survey links. Um, we'll do the Zooms, they're all in late May, we'll do about two hours, everybody, and those will be kind of free form, like I'll have everybody come into the Zoom, I'll probably do a little housekeeping of how to mute yourself and all of that kind of thing, probably have everyone kind of stick in the chat where they're Zooming in from. I thought at first about introductions, but if there's more than like 10 or so people in the Zoom, if we all go around and introduce ourselves, we'll probably take a really long time. So I'll probably just use the chat function for that kind of thing. And then I'll kind of like moderate, I guess. I'll think of some questions to ask. Um, I'm sure there's some resources online with like good questions to ask book clubs, but we can also just let the conversation kind of go where it takes us. Uh, and hopefully everyone has fun joining in. And if you're the kind of person that just wants to sit and listen on mute with camera off, go for it. There are no requirements of how you should attend. And I think what I meant to say earlier when I was talking about the time limit of like maybe around two hours, if you need to pop in late, um, pop in, just listen in first before you just jump in though so you don't interrupt the flow of conversation, but you don't, if it's starts at eight and you can't make it till 8.30 or so, I'm sure we'll still be going at that point. Um, so feel free to kind of jump in late if you need to. And of course, if you need to peace out early, um, my best practice for that is to, again, not to interrupt the conversation, to just stick something in the chat box and say, like, thanks so much for having me. This was fun. You know, talk to y'all later. Um, but yeah, easy. I mean, I'll have some parameters just because I want to make sure things go well and I'm type A. So I probably will have some housekeeping and certain things I expect of people who join the Zoom. But other than like being respectful and being on mute when you're not talking, if you have background noise, like otherwise just it'll be free flowing conversation. So it should be a lot of fun. And I hope most people can make it. And you know, if the times don't work, or you don't get around to finishing the book, or you get sick, or it's just not happening for you, we're going to do it every two months. So hopefully you can join in at some other point, um, probably mix it up with the kind of books we read. Um, so that might uh, dictate whether you join in certain months or not but it should be a lot of fun and the book is perfect and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope, I hope I continue to love it and I hope you all do too. But if anyone doesn't, you can still join the Zoom and tell us why you didn't like it. That's okay. You don't have to love it, but I'm hoping most people will. So, um, and I do have one little book review if you wanna stick around, if you're like, it's almost been an hour, I'm done. <laughs> you can head out, but I did read a book while I was in San Diego. That is much more my thing when traveling is to read, especially on a plane, I realize, than cross-stitching. Um, so I almost finished this one um, on my plane rides, but I didn't quite finish it, but I finished it when I got home. So this is Rebecca Serrell's Expiration Dates. A couple of you put this on Instagram, said you were interested in reading it or are reading it. Um, there's probably some backlist Rebecca Serrell books that I haven't read, but all of her recent ones um, I have, and I actually saw her speak two or three years ago um, at a local bookstore. At that point, she was talking about One Summer. I think it's called One Summer. One Italian Summer? One Italian Summer, um, which I really enjoyed hearing her speak. She came to that bookstore because she's from the Philly area. We don't always get a ton of great authors who come through this area. They probably all just kind of pop into Philly. I don't go into the city too much. It's not that far, but I just don't go to Philly that much. Um, but anyway, so she came and she spoke and she was wonderful and I really like her. So of course I picked up her newest book and there's always a bit of a magical element to her book books. Um, I don't like this term, but I don't know what else to call them. I would say they more lean toward chick lit, or you could say women's fiction maybe is the term I would use. Um, not that men can't read things written by women, but I just feel like this especially um, has a romance element. Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it like a romance novel, but there it is about relationships. Um, and so I think it's just leans more toward 
the female audience, but maybe not. Anyway, in this one, the main character is named Daphne. She works for a movie producer as an assistant. It is set in Los Angeles, which was fun to read while I was in San Diego since it's set in California. And Daphne, the magical element is that when she starts dating someone or right before she starts dating someone, she gets a note kind of out of nowhere. It could be in her mailbox. Someone could hand it to her. It could just fly, fall out of the sky. And the note has a name and a date. And so the name is the name of the guy she will be in a relationship with or even a one night stand with. And the date will be how long the relationship will last. So it'll say John three months or whatever. I made that one up. But um, and so then she always kind of knows how long she's in these relationships for which is both like a comforting thing because then she'll never be surprised by a relationship ending. She'll just know that something's going to happen that's going to cause that relationship to end. Um, but at the same time, it kind of takes the power away from her. And so it's kind of about that. And this isn't a spoiler because it happens right away. At the beginning of the novel, she gets a one of these pieces of paper and it has the name Jake but it does not have a date on it. And so what does that mean? Does that mean he's he's it? That's the forever gonna marry him? Does that mean something's gonna happen that makes the relationship end on her end? Like she's, something's gonna happen to her? Um, you know, there's, you don't know. And, it, and it's kind of like this thought on what we can control and what we can't control, what the effects that different relationships have on our lives. Um, mostly again, this one's romantic relationships. She writes a lot about every kind of relationship. Um, each book focuses on a different type, family, friend, romantic, that kind of thing so far, like in her more recent books. And so I just thought it was really well told. I liked the characters. I will say compared to the writing in like a single thread, um, Rebecca's writing is a little bit more simple. Um, it's not as poetic or eloquent or beautiful writing, which I know to expect, so it doesn't surprise me. It's just very straightforward. She does a lot of, um, you're supposed to show, don't tell, and she does a lot of telling, especially around what people were wearing. It's just kind of like, she just tells you what they're wearing every time she introduces a new character or someone new comes in, and you're like, all right, I don't care that he's wearing chinos. But, <laughs> So that aside, if you can be okay with writing that's a bit more simplistic, I'll just say, but really good characters, really good storytelling, really interesting take on things, a little bit of a magical element, but not fantasy or anything like that, more magical realism, something that's just easy to read, like a great beach read, great travel plane read, like you'll get sucked in, you won't want to put it down, it'll distract you, it was perfect for the plane. Um, so yeah, I just, I really liked it. I liked the way it ended. Um, I like the main character, Daphne. She's pretty well written, um, good character development. Um, there could have been maybe like a little bit more to it. You know, it was a little bit surface level, um, but there was some like slightly more serious parts to it. Um, one little, I wouldn't call it twist, but interesting. Um, I guess it's a twist. Mm. I don't know if twist is the right word. An interesting thing that happens that kind of makes you rethink um, how she's viewing these relationships and viewing her life and stuff like that. So um, I don't know, it just makes you like kind of think about the relationships in your life and how they led you to where you are now. So yeah, so I would recommend it. Um, you know, pros and cons to a book like that, but yeah, I would absolutely recommend it if you like that kind of thing. And if you like this one, it's very, um, in line with her other books. So if you enjoyed this one, you'll enjoy her other books as well. I especially liked One Italian Summer, um, looks at the mother-daughter relationship in a slightly different way, maybe than from my relationship with my mother, but I liked that, that look. I don't know if often we get books that really focus specifically on the mother-daughter relationship without veering all over the place. But this one, I mean, there was a little bit in one Italian summer, she did have a romance. There was a little bit of that, but mostly it was about the mother daughter relationship and um, how we view our mothers as mothers 
without knowing them or realizing who they were as younger women, as children, as teenagers, and you know, uh, in their 20s or, or 30s, or depending you know, what time you're thinking about. But like, you know, you just, I just see my mom as a mom, but she was a woman with, um, a youthful woman with goals and dreams and, and all of these things that kind of make her who she is as a person and not as a mother. And it's, it was just an interesting look at that. So one Italian summer was great too. Also the perfect beach read or plain read. So yeah, if you're looking for something light-ish and enjoyable, um, check this one out. And then I've got a couple more books in the pipeline that I'll probably be diving into, but I will also be focusing on a single thread while trying not to zoom through this one because I did read this a lot on the plane and I was like, no, 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 I got to put it down because I don't want to finish it all this week or something. And then like in three weeks be like, what happened in that book? What was the name of the character? Because I will do that. I will forget a lot of plot points if I don't um, finish it right before we meet for the book club. So I will be taking it slow. So I think that's it. Is anyone else reading anything good right now besides a single thread? Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything you would recommend I check out. Kristen Hanna's The Women is still on my list, so maybe I'll pick that one up um, sometime soon. But let me know how you're doing, what you're stitching. Ooh, and the last thing I wanted to ask, and this goes back to stitches and pages, so a lot of you might be gone. Um, I've been, I feel like I've been talking a lot, but it hasn't quite been an hour, but if you're stitching something and want me to show it here on my floss tube, I think that would be fun for my next video. So either tag me in your picture on Instagram or email it to me, novelstitcher at gmail.com. And I'm also novel underscore stitcher um, on Instagram. And maybe next week I will share some of your stitches on my channel for other people to see and enjoy that's related to the book during the bookish part of my video. So next video will be in two weeks. I hope you're doing well. Please vote for Stitches and Pages the time you would like to attend the Zoom call. Link is in the description. And I hope you will all have a wonderful week and happy stitching and happy reading. Bye everyone.